Cheryl. Amen. Amen. Pray we don't ever lose the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. Yeah. In the book of Acts chapter 19, it's really based on what's going on in the city of Ephesus. They had the temple of Diana there. The temple of Diana there was a safe place for criminals. <coughs> place that, that they could go and mix among themselves and turn all their troubles over to the Princess Diana there. There were folks there that would sell them charms, things to hang around their neck to drive away all the evil spirits in their life and uh, also provide them protection even from the law itself. Uh, the temple was about 425 foot long, 220 foot wide, and 60 foot high. It was considered one of the seven wonders of the world at the time. So that's where we pick up the book of Acts chapter 19, and verses 1 through, uh, I think it's about 22 or 23. Let me look here. All the way through verse 23. So if you please stand in honor of reading God's word, I hope you brought your Bible. Amen. And it came to pass that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And he said to them, If you receive the Holy Ghost, since you believe, they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Under what then are you baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. And when diverse were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing them daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that they all which dwelt uh, in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, and God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases parted from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call upon them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. There were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? The man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, for the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many of them that believed came and confessed, showed their deeds. And many of them also, which used curious all, brought their books together. Curious book, curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. They counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mildly grew the word of God and prevailed. I'm just going to go ahead and stop right there. Father, we thank you for your word today. We love you. We praise you for who you are. We know you're here moving amongst us. God, I pray we can all be obedient to you for what you're telling us to do. But God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. This is what the entire message is based on is who you are living inside of us. There's somebody here today that only you know. They don't have your Holy Spirit living inside of them. God, I pray you draw to yourself by that same Holy Spirit. Thank you that, God, you are going to open up your heart that's already been pierced for them to save them and change their life. And there may be believers here, God, struggling just like those that have already come forward. There may be more that need help from you in their circumstances in their lives. Thank you for the companionship of your Holy Spirit. 
We ask it all in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 So we start out here in verse 1 of Acts chapter 19. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and he found him certain disciples. And these, uh, this means some of the followers of Jesus Christ, not always necessarily the 12 original disciples, and some may be. He said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said to him, We have not so much whether uh, heard that there be any Holy Ghost. And he said to them, under what then were you baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. Amen. That is on Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, <clears throat> you must have evidence of your salvation through the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, it said, Repent, be you baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. That means the ransom of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Romans, chapter 8, verse 9, it said, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In other words, if you don't have the Spirit of God living in you today, you don't belong to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 16 gives you confirmation if you're saved or not. He said the Spirit of God itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you don't have that knowledge of the Spirit in your heart today, you are lost and you're on your way to a place of prepared for the devil and his angels. Now that's very simple preaching. But now what baptism event was he talking about? That's in Matthew 3, 11. Here's what it says. This is John the Baptist saying, I, uh, I indeed would baptize you with water to repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Amen. That word fire means that Holy, well, that Holy Ghost. In other words, that is a living repentance. What that means is that since you have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, Every time you're about to do something wrong, the Holy Ghost himself reminds you that what you're about to do is wrong and it's a sin. Amen? Yeah. If you don't have that, if all you have is your knowledge, your head knowledge, then that's just your conscience. You need the Holy Spirit of God to remind you from time to time. And then even as you're doing it, he's telling you it's wrong. And when you get done, the Holy Spirit reminds you what you just did is wrong. That's right. But praise God, he gives you an out. Amen. Say, so God, I know I messed up again. <laughs> no. Please, please forgive me. Amen. Please forgive me for what I just did. The Holy Spirit's all about companionship. You know, he said there's one that sticks closer to you than a brother. You know, when you get saved, you cannot get away from the Holy Spirit. That's right. You know, you Amen. can take him into the nastiest, awfulest place in the whole world. You know who's with you right there? The Holy Spirit of God. Right. You just took Jesus with you. Amen? Amen. You just took him into a place that you're ashamed that you took him. Companionship is important. Maybe you'll get it this way. There was a man traveling down the old back road, and he had a little small car. Probably, I don't know, what's the smallest car they make now? A, a Prius or something? Is that about the smallest thing? Amen. Pretty small. I took a trip, and one. we'll never do that again. Amen. <laughs> So he's traveling down the road in his little Prius, and up ahead of him is a great big old farm truck, and it's full of pigs. Amen? He gets up behind it, and this big old farm truck hits a big, big hole in the road, and one of the pigs just goes flying out of it, lands in the ditch. He goes over there, goes down in the ditch, and ministers to that little pig, and picks him up, and puts him in the front seat with him. Takes off down the highway again, and he goes about two miles, and he's trying to catch up with his truck, they just bounce that poor little thing out of there so he can give the pig back to the farmer. Well, then he sees blue lights. Here comes a policeman. He says, sir, you're speeding. And he says, why aren't you got a pig in your front seat? He said, well, I'm trying my best to get this pig back to the farmer. He said, if you do, you're going to have to speed again to catch him. And this time I'm going to give you a ticket. Okay, well, what am I for? He said, I'll tell you what, take him to the zoo. 
Okay, sir, I'll take him to the zoo. So he takes him to the zoo the next day down the same highway. Here's that man again, a little car with a pig in the front seat. He blew lights and pulls him over. He said, sir, I thought I told you to take him to the zoo. He said, I did, but he said, we had so much fun, I'm taking him to the beach today. <laughs> He wanted companionship. He wanted companionship. <laughs> I love that. I don't tell many jokes, but that's a good one. Amen. <laughs> but he is your he is your companion. That's right. That's we uh, mentioned in the ministry of the night with the men. Is your repentance as notorious as your sin? Is your repentance as notorious as your sin? That's a, a line that Charles Spurgeon wrote in one of his books, lectures to my students. I've read it just about every year since I surrendered to preach. What he's saying in that is that, look, the more people know about you as a believer in Christ, or they know more about your past and how you used to live. If you live the way that you're supposed to live after you're saved, you are going to become more notorious for that than for all the things God's already forgiven you of. Yeah, that's right. In other words, that gets people's attention. Because we, we don't reward that much these days. All we want to talk about is the bad stuff. Amen? Yeah. Amen? That's right. We ought to talk more about how the God delivers somebody. Yeah. How God saves yeah. somebody. How God changes somebody. How God makes a brand new daddy and a brand new mama. Amen. That's what we ought to brag about. But we talk about the awful stuff most of the time. But verse 5, back to Acts 19, he said, when they heard this, in other words, what he's trying to tell them is that, look, you need to be baptized through Jesus Christ. They did the best that they understood at the time, but Jesus hadn't come yet. Right. You see, when right. you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, and he plays himself inside of you, that's for you. Amen. And the other is just not quite what it needs to be. Right. So when they heard this, they, didn't, they were baptized what? In the name of John the Baptist anymore? No, they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in verse 5. Right. Not Paul's baptism. And it said when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and they prophesied. All the men were about 12. So we're dealing with the Holy Spirit now. Look at verse 8. He said he went to the synagogue, which is their version of the church, and he spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now look how they received his message. For when the verse, which means different ones, they rejected his message, said they were hardened and they believed not. But they speak evil of that way before the multitude. In other words, they publicly criticized the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may not believe it or not, but we're being criticized. That's right. Amen? Amen. You're being criticized. You're also being accused right now by Satan himself. That's right. That's right. See, he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. This continued for the space of two years that all they which dwell up in Asia, they heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now Romans 10 verse 12 said there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the same Lord is rich over unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Now let's talk about who is included in the whosoever. I want to be real careful now. I want you to hear what God has to say to you and I. I don't want to be included in the world's inclusion. Right. Right. Not very popular to preach about today. But everybody wants to include everybody. Christ did open up his arms and he let him drive nails in his hands and his feet so that whosoever should call upon him 
shall be saved. He opened up the gospel to everybody. But listen, that doesn't mean that you are to agree with what the world says about including everybody Amen. in their sins. Yes, he welcomes everybody. But I tell you, when you get saved, then you're supposed to see things different than the world does. Amen. And if you don't, then I don't know what Bible you're reading. Amen. But if you read it, if you read in the book of Romans, chapter 1, he lets us know that it's unseemly, it's wrong, that men would lie with men as with women. Amen. Leviticus right. 18 and 22. He said, It's an abomination. That's right. Come on. It's an abomination. Yes, he opened up the cross to everybody to give their heart and soul to him. But that's supposed to change your life. Right. And it's supposed to change the way that all of us see it and that we don't say silent about it. Right. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Don't, include, don't include me in your version the way that the world is turning their back against Israel, God's chosen people. Don't include me in that. I don't want that inclusion. Right. Right. I want to be a friend of Israel. Amen? Amen. Amen. How unfair does that look, you all? Are you keeping up with it when they line up? Some of those that have been taken hostage and shoot them in the back of the head, and when Israel retaliates, who gets criticized? Israel. Israel. Amen? Israel gets criticized. We better quit. We better stop agreeing with the world. That's right. Yep. Because I'm telling you what, I know one someday he's going to split that eastern sky. That's right. Right. And he's Amen. coming back. And he's not going to be happy with us. That's right. Yes, we fly the flag and we believe in it here. But I'm telling you what, listen to me, church. If we feel like we can get away with the way we're living without being punished, we are fooling ourselves. Amen. Amen. If he does not chastise America, it's going to be an absolute miracle. We've got it coming to us. Right. Yep. Amen. Right. Amen. We've got it coming to us. I was at my 50th high school reunion last night because they put a sticker on me so I know who I was. Amen. <laughs> but we're all going around. Do you know who I am? But yeah, but who am I? Amen. <laughs> and a lot of these kind of things begin, begin to come up. And I was thankful that, that I was in a, a group of 30-something believers. Right. Amen. Every single one of them. Amen. That saw things the way that the Word of God did that the Word of God says, to believe in them. Yeah. Very thankful for that. Amen. Hmm. Verse 11 of Acts 19. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Mm -hmm. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Hmm. Let's go on. I think I'm somewhere about verse 11, I believe. God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul. A verse, or just read verse 12. Then certain of the vagabonds Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Now, <clears throat> The hands of Jesus Christ touched many people. Mark chapter 1, verse 30 said, Simon's wife's mother, she lay sick of a fever, and the word Annam, the word and, and Annam, they tell him of her. That means at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered to them. Mark 1, 32, and at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and then that were possessed by devils. Verse 33, Mark 1, and all the city was gathered together at the door. Mark 1, 34, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, cast out many devils, and suffered. That means allowed not the devils to speak. Yeah. Because they knew him. Hmm. They knew him. Do you have a fear of human touch that Paul used his hands to touch them just like Jesus did did you know ever since ever since COVID hit there are folks that are 
afraid of human touch. That's right. Amen. Amen. So if that's you, and somebody comes up here to pray and needs somebody to come share with him, then you're you're totally helpless. You can't do that, can you? Amen. That's right. Who taught you? Who taught you to be afraid? Who taught you to be afraid? Who caused that? What caused it? When did it happen to you? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. human touch. The human touch is very important to us. We want, we want to be praying that God use our hands to really help folks. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? I watch you all all the time. How that you respond to each other and you hug each other and you shake hands and do all those things. Don't let us slip into that Spirit of fear ever. That's right. Amen. Still love each other. Still minister to each other. And I say it a lot here. We need to, we need to do this more. Right. When somebody just out of the wild blue, led by the Holy Spirit, just grabbed me by the hands and kind of prayed with you for a minute, I'm telling you what, Amen. I'm ready to charge hell. Right then. Yeah. Well, water crystal. It encourages us. Don't let your fear of what others and what the world has cast into your spirit keep you from ministering to each other. God has given you something special right here. Amen. But we're so conditioned now. Lack of a handshake. I grew up in a generation that some. Some of you old goats like me, I grew up in a generation that we made deals, we bought cars, we bought houses on a handshake. Amen? Amen? Yeah. But then if you didn't make the payments, uh, they probably didn't want to shake them again. Amen? <laughs> it's important what we do with our hands. You know, Jesus could have accomplished every single one of those, even the ones I just read. Well, I didn't ever laying his hand on somebody. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. He doesn't have to do that. He chooses to be a personal Savior for you and for me. Amen. That's right. Amen. He chooses that. Maybe we ought to choose it more. That's right. Amen. Tim Hawkins, a Christian comedian, he decided he wanted to use his hands once in signing autographs. And some of you may have heard this before, but somebody came through the line there where he had done a show and he said, you know, I, I think I need to write this person a, a Bible verse to encourage him. He wanted to use his hands to help somebody. So he signed a Bible verse and wrote it down, and the person walked off, and he saw him go just so far, and he stopped and came walking back. <coughs> and he gave him a look, and he said, uh-oh, maybe I wrote the wrong thing down. And he did. Here's what it says. Psalm 38, 7, For my loins are filled with a burning disease. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get off of that. <laughs> so sometimes with your best intentions you can mess up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, he said, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Now in verse 13 again, it said, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, the exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you, in other words, we charge you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Now, who were they? Look at verse 14. There were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew 
and chief priests which did so. So verse 14 tells me that look, <coughs> these seven sons, their father was the chief priest. See, some folks think because of their church association, their church tradition, that that's going to take care of the devil and all his angels. That's what they thought. These were the sons of the chief priests. Listen, it doesn't matter if you're a, my son, if you're a son of a deacon here, you have no more power than nothing until you get saved and have Christ inside right. of your heart. And if you, you're basing it on the tradition of Benzor Baptist Church or the Church of God or the Catholic Church or any other church you want to mention today, it's not going to help you. That's right. There's no power in these buildings. There's no power in tradition. None of those things saved you. Amen. First Peter 1.18 says, For as much as you know you were not redeemed, or you know or you weren't ransomed, why would you need to be ransomed? I'll tell you why. Because somebody by the name of Satan owns you until you get saved. He is your father. Yes. That's right. You are his slave. You were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a blemish, without blemish and without spot. Jesus Christ's blood alone ransomed you and saved you and is continually protecting you. When God sees your mistakes and your faults, His vision is blocked by the blood of His own Son. Amen. Amen. But He still knows about your failures and about mine. But the blood protects you from His wrath. Amen. So, they decided that they would attack this evil spirit. The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? You see, the, the demon world, the devil's world, they know who Jesus is. James 2.19 said, Thou believe there is one God, thou do well. The devils also believe. And what do they do? It says they tremble. They tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. And the man, in verse 16, whom the evil spirit was, leaped on them and overcame them, prevailed against them, so they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now, I've seen some fights before, and a shirt tore, and a sleeve tore, but I've never seen somebody whoop them so bad they knocked and whoop their clothes come off of them. Amen? Amen. He said, this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. Fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Verse 18, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. You see what that means, that last part means in closing. When the Holy Spirit truly comes into your heart and changes your life, then it begins to come out of your life and it, your deeds show who you are, that you belong to Christ. If your lifestyle doesn't look like Christ on a continual basis, then you need to be saved today. You need the Holy Spirit to change you today. And maybe you're agreeing with the inclusion and all these other things in your life the Holy Spirit will change after you and you will see the truth for the first time. Right. No matter what anybody tells you, no matter what your president tells you, no matter what your friend tells you, no matter what your boss tells you, the Holy Spirit will speak the truth to you because he cannot lie. He has to agree with the Word of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. And by the way, if you don't read the Word of God and if you don't attend church and learn the Word of God, then guess what? You're in a mess because you don't know the truth. That's right. You don't know it. You need the truth, and I need the truth. The Bible says, you shall know them by their fruit. Is your fruit looking like Jesus Christ? In other words, what you do, what comes out of your life. You and I can talk a real big game and say all kinds of things. But he said, you shall know them by their fruit. Does your fruit match up with the Word of God? If you're a believer and it's not matching up, 
That means that, that you're in disobedience to the will of God and you know what the will of God is for you. You can come and confess that thing to him right now. And if you're lost and you've never been saved, there's a good time for you to finally, finally obey what the Holy Spirit of God's telling you to do. If you're sitting here lost and you know it, you keep putting it off thinking you've got another day. Maybe you need to watch a little more news to wake you up that death has surrounded you in the United States of America, even driving down the interstate or your children in school. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm not using any leverage. If you don't know what's going on, baby, then you're blind and choosing to be blind. And if you think that God's giving you another day, <laughs> He doesn't promise that. That's right. Amen. Amen. Everybody here has already made, made plans for tomorrow, but not a one of us are guaranteed. Right. You come if you don't know Him today. I promise you, He'll save your soul and change Amen. your life. He'll show you how in the Word of God. Amen. You thought you have a need today.